So now, this is unboxing, brand new. They weigh, I think, close to, I think 60 or 80 pounds, I forget. But for you to have to fight with it, to install it, is a lot. So I will be using my drill to, to do this work. Just kind of make it quicker. Yes, I use crap now. I've been using for many years. And have always done me good. So on these units right here, to make it lighter, I cut everything. Now, I know how to put the wires back. It's real plain and simple. Red goes to red, black goes to black. You yellow and orange go to yellow. Real simple. You got a bunch of screws on these new ones. Don't forget this one up here. Now this is the first company. Um, I have installed Goodman in the past. I'm more satisfied with, with these. And it's real simple, the electronics on it. Cut and dry. This particular one's a 10KW. I'm gonna be disconnecting one of the KWs. Uh, just because it's running on a 30 amp breaker with a number 10 wire. You cannot run 40 amps on a number 10 wire. I'm sure you could, but you also, also risk that breaker not tripping or tripping all the time. Some technicians would just change out the breaker to a 40 amp breaker and say, I'll fix the problem. But your wire, will, it'll pop first. Real simple, it just pulls right out. You can kind of see. I'll show you which one I'm gonna disconnect. I don't know if it's on there or not, but that's right there. So 5K, 5K. The plenum will mix the air properly for me, so I should not have to worry about any cold spots in the unit itself. So you're gonna have 10K here and the other 10K here. So what I'm going to do, you have to look at the actual wiring of it. We're gonna disconnect this black wire here and this black wire here. Now, just don't throw the wire away. Be nice to the next technician. It's not nice for you to just throw everything away. So what I like to do whenever I'm doing that, I'll take the little tiny wire and I'll wrap it around the existing wires. That way, if, if the unit ever needs it for whatever reason, um, we have the actual wire still within. Should not touch anything, it's wrapped up pretty well. Um, it's also a good time to knock out your little hole on the side. So this unit is actually a two-ton air handler. Yep, I'm putting a two-ton air handler in the place of a ton and a half. But give you a little specifications on the unit while I'm farting with this. The ten, the ton and a half units that we have here, and the two-ton units we have here are all ten seal. This is a 13 sear, I'm sorry, this is a 10 sear, two ton unit. The thickness of the coils are the same. Yeah, everything is identical. I've compared them already. I'm not getting into detail with that. The only thing that they change is your metering device. Sorry, here. So I go, I take out the .59 piston that they come with 
and I go back with a .53 piston. 51 is what it calls for, this particular unit, but we're gonna go back with a 53. That little bit of a difference is not going to change anything. Don't let anyone fool you. I've been doing it, it works. I get great pressures, nothing out, nothing outrageous. Nothing to be alarmed with. This also gives me a chance to make sure that they installed it right. You'd be surprised, I actually had one I installed um, uh, a few years back that I guess whenever it was built, they put too much heat right here in the neoprene had actually, um, and I'm being very careful with this, the, the, the little neoprene had actually melted all in there the piston itself the little neoprene thing on the tip of the piston right here it's all melted in there check them make it a practice i know it might be silly to do that but it would suck for you to install that bad boy and next thing you know you're having to rip it back out because of a mistake now i'm going back with the brand new little neoprene thing there we go, I can see now. I'm going back with the brand new neoprene. It does matter what way the piston goes, so when you pull it out, make sure you're putting it back in. And if you forget, first company actually has a nice little, let's see, does it happen on this one? No, it doesn't, oh, there it is. There's a little diagram that, that tells you how to actually put it back in. So in the event that that's your first time doing it, you have something to go off of. These also, you probably can't read this, but it says, oh, I messed it all up. It actually says there's no valve stem in here. That's your equalizer port in the event that you are running a, a thermal expansion valve. We do not run thermal expansion valves here. Everything is uh, cap either capillary tube, if it's the original, or it's gonna be a fixed orifice. This one, fixed orifice, clearly. Don't wanna to over tighten it too, not, too tight. You go too tight with it, you risk cracking that brass nut. It is just brass. Now, I've always been taught, do not, you know, like whenever you're installing a, a condenser, Man, I don't know why they put it that tight. <clears throat> Whenever you're installing a condenser, you always want to you always want to remove all your little rubbers and stuff like that because it'll melt. It's true. I also find whenever I install these that sometimes there's there could be burrs up in there, and you want to make sure that you want to you get all the burrs out. And where's my little screwdriver? I lost my screwdriver. There it is. You want to make sure that you you don't have any burrs in your way, because if you do, you're gonna have a heck of a time installing it. I go in till it bottoms out and back it out. I put it with my little screws. So that's good. I'm gonna leave this tape on here in this little stopper. So whenever I'm installing it, I don't get a bunch of yuck yuck in there. Another thing I do, I like to angle the drain pan. As you can see, I don't know if you can, but the drain pan has adjustment screws on it. All I'm gonna do is raise this side up. Drop the screw. No, I did not just let it eat away. It was in a, in a bind. I believe in putting things back together with this. I find drills will strip stuff out a lot quicker than anything else. 
So you got yourself your connections. I don't know if you can see it, but you got your connection there and your connection there. We're gonna be putting, uh, we're gonna cap this one off here. We're gonna put our uh, female adapter here and on this one on this side, which is out of frame. Here we go over there. Uh, we're gonna put another um, cap on that. So because of the way this is set up, I'll show you one side, then I'm gonna do the other. I like to make sure, because of, let me see, I think that's gonna be it. Because of the way the plenum is designed, your opening, I like to bend, bend this down just a little bit, just so I'm not uh, fighting with trying to get it to go back in. I'll show you just right here. I'll take um, duck bill pliers do not work well. I find that there's too much metal to try to bend at once. Just to, just your regular pair of channel locks. That one, nothing special. Works pretty well. Yeah, I'm only doing about a half an inch at a time, but that's works because when you're working by yourself and you got to fight to get it to be installed this is one less thing you got to worry about and it works it works it does and then I've been kind of doggy at the other side Dog here at the bottom. It's a pain whenever you're trying to fight it in. And it grabs every little piece. It does not affect the cooling ability of this unit. So there you have it. I'll get everything else buttoned up and I'll be back with you.